Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and um, thank you so much for coming to the talk with uh, Angela Missoni, creative uh -oh. director of uh, Missoni. Um, today, it's one of the very first activities in conjunction with this uh, big exhibition on Italian fashion that is opening next week here at the Victoria and Albert Museum. And this is great that we are opening with uh, the fabulous Angela. Um, as you well know, uh, Missoni is one of the leading and the most distinctive fashion houses in the world, um, always associated with the use of knitwear, colors, um, geometrics, abstract flowers, hundreds of patterns, and of course for the famous zigzag motif that made this, you know, the Missoni House fashion house one of the most celebrated in the world. Um, Missoni is also well known for the innovation on knitwear, you know, these are the few techniques that have been left in the world that haven't tried. Um, every single season, you know, the fashion shows, there is a new element, a new print, a new jacquard that have never been seen before. Um, even last February, when I was in Milan for the fashion week and uh, the, their collection for the next fall winter, I thought it was a, a normal coat, um, a tweed coat, and actually it was uh, a knitted one. Um, and, you know, a few other uh, elements of uh, knitwear, wizards, in, w as the wizard of knitwear. Um, the Missoni was created a few years ago, thanks to this beautiful uh, image of uh, Angela's parents, Rosita, who is here with us tonight. It is a major... Fantastic. <laughs> I think It is a great honor. And of course, uh, Ottavio, um, the fabulous husband who um, left a year ago. Um, and uh, Missoni is also, I mean, just, this is just another brief introduction, uh, is a, a great example of a family business. Family business in Italy um, is, become, is one of the biggest things of the made in Italy. A lot of uh, fashion houses and design houses um, are still owned by families. Um, you know, you can see the kids, their children, the niece and nephews, they all sit on the same table deciding what pasta to eat and what is the next shop to be opened. Um, <laughs> and uh, at this point, I'd love to um, leave Angela to tell us, I know that this question has been asked many times, hundreds of times, but how did it all start? How did it all start? It's... Uh started basically with the wedding of, uh, with the marriage of my, the encounter of my parents and then their marriage. And uh, my father, this was, we're talking about the uh, late uh, 40s when they met the first time in 1948. Actually, they met here in London during the Olympic Games uh, because my father was a sportsman and he was uh, running for uh, the Italian team, uh, 400 meter hurdles. And uh, my mother was a student, uh, and she was 16 at the time. My father was already 27, I guess, yes. And uh, she was a student in Italy, and she was a good student. So at the end of the course, uh, the, the, the school took all the girls of this uh, course in London to, for a month, and then in that moment, uh, occasionally to a friend or something, she met my dad. And actually, if you really want to know, that's a very curious uh, anecdote. They, first time they met, they met uh, in Piccadilly under the Eros uh, statue. So <laughs> this was, was it. <laughs> and that's the story that where luck. the story begins. Rosita was 16. Here's some of the Yes, images. this is the picture of my father winning the semi-final. Ah, okay. He didn't win the Olympics, but uh, he won his, uh, the semi-final semi uh, there, race. then he was yeah. six, but he was already la uh, late in, it, in his years because he had five years of prison before uh, just, he came back two years before the Olympic Games from war, from, fam from what he liked to say, he was guest of the King of England for five years <laughs> in Egypt. <laughs> So uh, apparently it was already a miracle that he made it on that Olympic. Uh, but uh, okay, he met Rosita there. And uh, it's a beautiful Rosita image. thought he was already, she thought he was the most handsome man she ever seen. And uh, in fact, I guess she was right. right. And uh, 
she thought about and she invited him at her 18th birthday. 17, ah, one year after, 17th birthday, she invited him. Okay, they started at the time to write the postcard and that, and they married when she was 22, 23, 22. Okay, she managed to get that uh, she was so, <laughs> stubborn. She knew that was the man, okay. And uh, if you ask her, when did he ask you to marry, she said, probably he never asked me. <laughs> She said, I don't remember exactly when, but she married him. <laughs> okay, my father, in the few years before, started, uh, when he came back from war, he started with some friends who were in, also involved in sport to do some tracksuit, some knitted tracksuit. That's why he had this knowledge of uh, knit. And actually, that Olympic Games, uh, the Italian team uh, of uh, track and field and another t and the polo and basket were wearing the track suit made by Ottavio Missoni. Ottavio Missoni. Fantastic, I didn't know that. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so knit come for my father was comfort, was easiness, and that's something that you will find in the root of the label together with color but also together with fashion. Who brought the fashion in? Rosita. Rosita, who was uh, brought up in a family of uh, uh, industrial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Industrial family. A family, I mean, she comes, uh, first of all, we have to say that she's, she was already, she had two generation of we working women ahead of a company, basically, working next behind their husband at the time, but, uh, and their great-grandfather started a company of embroideries, basically. They were producing fabrics and embroideries. And she basically was brought up uh, playing and looking at all the most important magazines of the time, which were not as many as today, but that's what that's how she made she her knowledge and yes. fashion and her, uh, how her passion grow. Actually, the dress that she had when she married, she designed herself. Oh, that's okay. something to, no, that's a scoop, huh? You didn't uh, know. Yeah, this yeah. is a scoop tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they married, they started, so they were just thinking to make up their life. They weren't thinking to do big fashion. Big fashion at the moment, they were not, you wouldn't even talk about big fashion because there was high fashion and then there was a, it was just right before the beginning of pret a what we call today pret a who started in Paris and in Italy with Missoni, basically, and a few other houses in the same moment, as Mrs. Burstein knows very well. <laughs> And, and when was uh, this? Is it already the, the mid 50s? This we, the, I guess, the, in this moment. So they started in 53. They married by yes. This is the pic, uh, the picture we saw before of those two striped dresses. Yeah, yeah. Those were made in 1958, and those were the first dresses to come out with the Missoni label, because uh, they got a big order from La Rinascente in Milan, which was the store promoting. Pret-a-Porter, the most fashionable and hype uh, store at the time. And those were two very simple chemisiers, but they were very innovative. Why? What did, because when you think of Missoni, you think of knit, but there's something that not many people realize. What did she invent? She started to cut knit as it was fabric instead of fabric. That's what she had in her hands. She had those, they had those machines that were making knits, and she's, they started producing rows of knit, like if they were fabrics, and that's why the stripes are vertical in those knits. Uh, so the little things today to think about, they were totally innovative, innovative at, the time. at yeah. the time. So that's the material they had in their hand, and that's how they use it. And those stripes were very simple. There were three color stripes, uh, black, gray, and a purple. 
and another an aubergine, and then the other one was uh, brown, beige, and uh, fuchsia, I don't know, but very subtle. The color was very subtle, but that was the big hit, and that's when the Missoni started the label, and then I think they had their first big uh, recognition, I think I remember myself, because the thing is that I, I mean, this I didn't remember because I was born in 58, so I was not there. But uh, every other very important moment of the family and of the business, I was there because we were around. We were just... Uh, and here is a beautiful picture of actually Rosita with the... the uh, this Ottavio is 1966. With the, it's me, my brother Luca, and my brother Vittorio. We were in uh, Dalmatia. My father is from Dalmatia. He was born in what's today called Dubrovnik, but at the time it was called Ragusa. And that's a long story also that we can tell, but another time. <laughs> and this is another this is, picture of the family. This is an old picture taken by my father. Ah, okay. Yes, my father has always been a very good photographer with a passion for photography. And... Uh, that's a picture. And okay, this is the first fashion show that I remember. Exactly, yeah, okay. This is uh, 1965, 66, 66, 66. okay. And, uh, and it was a show handled in a theater, in a small theater in Milan. And I remember, like now, it was but for me, it was kind of normal, right? It was, it was my parents' show, it was a show. <laughs> and it was, it like was already <laughs> conceived, you know, in, in Milan at that time, it was already conceived, you know, the catwalk with the models no. and everything. How, how did no. you, how that no, 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 no. This was a, a happening, basically. Okay. So, and the fact was that there was no catwalk, there was just a prochain, una, yeah, like, un like, like a yeah? stage. Like a stage. And the girls were, yes, and this collection, ah, okay. Big story, uh, but we need 24 hours, I can take <laughs> Okay, but it's very curious and important because uh, at the time, uh, after the collection of 58, uh, uh, they were working, uh, always a bit, leaving a bit the sports and doing more uh, women clothes, and they were, they've been noticed by Biki, which at the time was the high fashion designer in Milan, she was the, the, the designer of Callas, for instance. And they were producing little sweater for Biki. And then they were noticed, one day they've been called by Carden. Uh, so Rosita was very, very excited. My father never get it excited by those things, <laughs> by, basically by fashion, right? We can say, <laughs> he was a draw, okay, fine, but... Uh, she was got very excited, okay, we have to go to Paris, we have to meet Cardin, maybe we can learn. She, she was expecting to learn things from him, right? We're gonna work next to him and learn, I don't know, how many things. Then when she went to this appointment, they, they went to the appointment, and Rosita also speak fluently French. French. And uh, the guy says, so when are we gonna meet Mr. Cardin? I said, no, 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 we don't, you don't need to meet. You just do your thing, you show us the, your thing, you and do? then uh, we choose them and we put them in the collection. <laughs> she felt so, so disappointed and said, no, 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 this is not what I want to do. I, uh, I want to have a collaboration and... Uh, and uh, so nothing. She went back to the hotel, she was very disappointed, and all of a sudden she remembered that by a strange coincidence, uh, the year, few months before, she did a trip with her parents in New York, and through a friend and a coincidence, she met Emmanuel Kahn. And uh, she said to my dad, listen, why? We are in Paris, why don't we call up Emmanuel? Okay, she called up Emmanuel. At Emmanuel Kahn, at the time, you have to understand that she was one of the first fashion designer. Huh? That of Preta Porte. I mean, not somebody having her factory. She was a designer, fashion designer. And uh, 
So they met and they decided, okay, to do a collaboration, which ended up with that oh, fashion okay. show. Okay, the collaboration lasted for uh, two seasons, I think, four seasons. Okay, and uh, at this point we are, we went up, yes, there was another one. Let's see if the next one is in a swimming pool. My favorite, favorite. Yes. This is the same show. The girl were changing. This was really a performance because the girl were changing in the back of the screen. Oh my God. And okay. you could see them change. I mean, think about 66 and, uh, okay, that okay, was yes. another one. My second fashion show. It was uh, held in a swimming pool in, oh in Milano, God. La Piscina okay. Solari. With all, and the girls were going from one side to the other of the swimming pool on those inflatable chair. And here we are in 68. Oh, fantastic, I didn't know huh? this. Designed by Ryan Kahn, who was the husband, of, who was an architect, and he was the husband of okay. uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel Kahn. And uh, of course, it all happened that then the house collapsed and they all <laughs> went in the water, and it was like a big happening. And, then, and for me, yeah, I was there. It wasn't fun. It is was this, normal. I was. Is this, that was is my this life. From the same collection. Yeah. Yes. 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 This is. You see the inflatable sofa couch yes. there. And, and this I remember one cute thing at that time. We are here in 1967, 68, 68. Okay. And I remember. Anna Piaggi that I know, I think from 1965, probably 64, 65, the first time that she came and, and to meet my parents uh, at the factory. And, uh, and I remember her, like now, I was always next to my mom at the entrance. My mom was greeting the guest uh, entering to the fashion, to the swimming pool there. And Anna arrives and she did like that, like, uh, Rosita, look at me, like you. I'm wearing, how old is that? I mean, she was wearing a, wind, a vintage piece. She was in 1968, Anna Piaggi was a wearing, wearing a, a Missoni vintage, black and white <laughs> <laughs> dress <laughs> that she had maybe from five years. But it's really, I just remember like now, like if it was this moment that it's, she was like, uh, look at me, I'm having a vintage. You wouldn't use the word vintage at the time. <laughs> I'm wearing an old piece of Missoni. Yeah, and th this is already, so this is, where, this is already the zigzag motif, just, yes. the, just in, in a, That just was starting. one of the first zigzag, because it all, I mean, the first machine they had, they were basic machines, so they started to do stripes. Then Rosita, coming from a family, she remembered, First of all, she remembered that they were using uh, those machines to do knitted shawls that they usually were doing in black. Those are the Rachel machine. Mm. And they were doing black shawl for the, black, for the widow in the south of Italy. But when they saw those machines, uh, and my father realized how many yarns could, do, could go in those machines, because they were not classic uh, looms uh, of, uh, avevano ordito? Yeah, you and you could have, use you basically how many colors you wanted in that thing. And you could do stripe, but you also could do zigzag. That's how the zigzag started, basically, because they found a machine who could do zigzag. Okay, and um, um, so going just back maybe one or two years before, you know, you were also invited to Pitti, because Pitti- That's the later. Oh, is that, is that it's later? coming. Ah, oh, okay. Because, yeah. you know, I've, I've got a little... After 68, after the collection of 68, no, in 69, they were invited to Pitti. Pitti is this one. this okay, collection. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Because there is a little anecdote. That yeah. Really they were invited to Pitti, so a big honor, so they were getting somewhere, basically. They started to be noticed by the press. Uh, Sorry, and but, but, but just to say, Palazzo Pitti was uh, in Florence, what is now Milan uh, Fashion Week. So it was yeah. literally the place where to show for all the designers, the Italian, the made in Italy and everything. Yeah, and, the, and they were not solo show. There was like uh, one big show. You had, I don't know Different how many models, 15 models, one after the other. It was running on the same stage, uh, one after the other, right? For a few days, for two, three days. Uh. Okay, so what happened? 
it happened that uh, basically there were some clothes which were uh, in uh, lurex and they were printed with a flock and uh, they were, she, Rosita, just realized the moment the girl were under the light going out on stage that the clothes were transparent. So, and the girls at the time, at the time, you didn't have those cute bra or nude bra, they had big white bra. <laughs> and uh, so she said, no, 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 how do you feel it? Off the bra, off the bra, off the bra. <laughs> and so they sent the girl out on the catwalk, basically... Without bra. Without bra, <laughs> and with something really see-through, and it was a huge scandal. It was a huge scandal. They were banned from Palazzo Pitti. All the newspaper in Italy were saying crazy ores in, uh, on the in catwalk Florence. at Palazzo <laughs> Pitti. But guess what? The month after in Paris, Saint Laurent presented the nude look. Okay, so. <laughs> For a reason you were ahead of the time, of course. <laughs> um, and so, so this, this is part of that collection, as we can see, it is yeah. Lurex. And, um, Going on the... This is the fame collection, the, the, the collection where they went invite, they, after they were re-invited ah, re to Palazzo okay. And they presented the, this is the collection of winter 1970. And it was the famous collection that really made the signature of their style. It was a collection called the Put Together, that has been baptized, not from them, but from the press, the Put Together look. The Put Together, okay. Because there were different stitch of knit, there were printed jersey flowers, little, little motifs, uh, uh, plaid, uh, checks, uh, all together, mixed senior. up. And uh, that was the moment where the Rosita liked to say, she said that when they went back to the hotel, she said to my father, we made it, <laughs> we've made it. <laughs> and that was, I guess, the first collection that Mrs. Burstyn bought, right? Yeah? So exciting. <laughs> And that was the moment where uh, then all the mag, the, the American, the market, the market at the time was something else. Italy was a very small market, uh, and there were few shops. Like in Milano, there were two shops that were selling pret a porter and I, Cose e Gulp. In the, first, in, the, in the famous now, what it's called the quadrilateral, quadrilateral. of the fashion, which all the roads are fashion, how there were two shops selling pret a -Porter. Because at that time it was Paris, mostly the no, main No, it was Paris, but capital. also Paris. It was not a hundred of shops. There were like a few the shops design. also in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> Anche a Parigi. And there were few shops, maybe one in London. There was Brown's. <laughs> who was starting at the time? Huh? One, starting. The first shop in London who started pret a -Porter was Brown's. And, but in the States, the market, the big market at the time was in the States, where they had stores, and they had stores with many doors around. So if you made it to the States, you really made it. Really made it. There was no Japan, no Korea, no Far East, no South, uh, nothing else, right? The and uh, the big department that's stores, what you know, the moment when uh, they were noticed by Diana what's the name? Vreeland. Diana Vreeland. Yes. Which exactly. made an important. Uh, she came to Italy. And uh, so talking back. And she told them that they had to go to she New York, and she here, invited <laughs> them to New York, and then she introduced them. To, to the big department all the stores. big stores. Okay. So going through all some of the images here, because uh, Missoni has always been always ahead of its times. Even the time they were the first one to use illustrations, mm -hmm. um, and you know, great illustrators to um, to feature their fashion. And um, this was um, Brunetta was the, the, the Brunetta the was an amazing, yes. amazing. Uh, 
illustrator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of your jumpers. But still, you know, as you said, from when you, when you first started, you know, with Rosita and Ty, you know, they did the, 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 the uh, knitwear jersey uh, jumpsuit. You know, the element of sport has always been a leitmotif of Missoni. I mean, is it been going on? I mean, do you, do you feel that? I would say more than the sports, the element of comfort. Sport. That you have the fact that you have to be at ease with what you're wearing. And uh, I think I translated that through the years also while I'm using also fabrics and other material with the fact that what I hate the most is to see even the most beautiful women, if she spend all the evening to pull up her bra or to pull down her skirt, I think that's the most unsexy attitude or element you can have. So I think that you have always have to be careful mm -hmm. of, of what, you're wearing. Yeah. what you're wearing and how you feel, that you have to feel at ease in your, yeah. what you're wearing. Um, now, going back to the family, so when was you know, the big family involvement, I mean, yours and you know, your brothers together working with uh, Rosita and Ottavio? I mean, was it, it became like a natural evolution of the, <laughs> the business or? It became like a natural thing, but in fact, I must say that uh, we were pushed to do other things. Oh, okay. Yes. That's why maybe we all came back. Came back <laughs> to it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my parents, uh, they loved their job. They loved what they were doing. They really had a big passion in their work, but it was not their only passion. They had many other passion in life. So probably my father liked to say, if we wouldn't have been back in, he would have closed the business uh, Many years, ago. years ago because he had enough to live, so he didn't care <laughs> for the rest. <laughs> he was not a businessman in terms of... Uh, Rosita neither was a businesswoman, but she has always been a builder, right? Yeah. Like she, she, she goes, she has to go. She go. she's building. She doesn't know why, but she's building, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, my father has always been a very different uh, attitude. And then he was refusing. He, the, the company never grew. And that's why sometimes people are amazed. They say, why Missoni is 60 years? It's one of the older label. Why are you still so small? Because uh, that's how it started. Even when they had success, my father never wanted to expand. In the 70s, they had that many opportunities to do, and those were the first license that you had the occasion to do, right? But my father was just telling my mother, why do you want to work more and gain more money if we don't have time to spend it? <laughs> That is very wise. Basically, my father had uh, was very med Mediterranean attitude, and he liked to say, joking, I'm sure that he, in those years he did work a lot, but he liked to say that uh, also when they gave him the, the merit for, for what they make him, my cavaliere, come si chiama? Like uh, they gave him an honor in Italy for the people who did well for Italian yep. works or uh, it's like an he just say, you know what, you should have given this prize to my wife. <laughs> she, she had the merit of making me work. <laughs> What's this, what is this picture? This is the Neiman Marcus uh, Fashion Award, ah, okay. which uh, basically was the, the Oscar of fashion. And this has been, you got that in 75? 73, 1973, you got it, and the year before, or the year after, chi l'ha preso prima di voi? No, lo so, ma per dire, in Italy, I know, but who got it? Now, just to tell, who was born, just to say what was happening in the world in terms of fashion. Okay, Jean Muir got it at the time. E l'altro, l'americano? Okay, Ralph Lauren. So Ralph Lauren was basically starting at those times. Collection. All embroidered. Ralph Lauren, first collection Western with all embroidery bits. Okay. okay. And then the, 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 Missoni. And then exactly. Missoni. 
and the man on the right. Okay, there is my mother, my father, and Stanley Marcus. Oh my God, okay. Yeah, over there. Fantastic, and this is again, you know, a celebration of Rosita and Tai by Antonio Lopez. Antonio Lopez was one of the greatest illustrators yeah. between, you know, the 17th and the 80s, and it was very much like what Mario Testino would do today with pictures in uh, drawings. And he was a very close friend of the family, I suppose, because, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of images. He was a very good friend of Anna Piaggi and Vern Lambert. And, exactly. and, uh, and he did a few campaigns with her, with yeah. us, styled by Anna. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, Anna Piaggi, you know, was one of the most uh, well-known uh, fashion women in the world. And, you know, she, I remember when I first came to the fashion show, so Missoni Fashion Show, there was always this beautiful little booklet uh, in all different colors and a press release written by Anna Piaggi. Yeah. That when I first started, I couldn't understand the worry because it was so <laughs> intricate in these fashion moments that she was talking about. But it, it made such a sense after. How was that relationship with Anna? I mean, when did it start? How did it go? And I, uh, I think uh, it started around 1965. She was really the first uh, um, fashion, she came in as fashion editor, right? She was a, what today is called a stylist. Uh, and she came because she heard about uh, Missoni. It was 1965. She was already handling, uh, she was uh, editor-in-chief of a magazine called uh, Arianna. Arianna at the time in Italy. And she came to meet uh, my parents and they started, they, they started to be friends. Her husband was a photographer, uh, Alfa Castaldi, and who became very close friend of my father. And, uh, and there was they a started a, a, a collaboration like that for, for the passion of fashion. Yeah. She styled no? also a few shows at the time and uh, also the shows in 1970s uh, that the famous put together uh, was styled by, by Anna with Anna, together with Anna. And uh, I've known Anna all For my long life. Long. And uh, what? Uh, and what was very special of Anna, she started as a fashion editor. She became a fashion journalist and a writer, oh, okay. right? In, uh, she really grew, she grew a, a very special, I mean, she was very special yeah. and very talented and, uh, and she was a talent scout and she, it, it was pure, pure fashion, fashion, I can say, no? And we miss Energy, her. yeah. We all miss her, I think, yeah. in fashion. And um, um, now going back, you know, this is still one of the, 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 the what well, the 80s, as I can see from the haircut and from the style, no? See, si, um, starting. And the makeup. Uh, 70, the might be 79, 80, 20, yeah, or yeah, 80, exactly. 21, 80. Yeah. And then uh, um, there was also a connection yes. of uh, Missoni and the theater, because, you know, uh, Rosita and Ottavio. Um, started to also to design some uh, costume for La Scala di Milano that is literally the, the best uh, um, theater in the world. So what was it? For some operas here. Yeah. And yeah. then again another... Um, and that, there's a very nice anecdote there. Well, here? Yeah. Oh, tell us, tell us. Because uh, COVID were very happy they were doing those costumes and they were in the backstage. Uh, and of course they did... Uh, at the end of the opera, basically, the, how do you say, the, the um, conductor. The conductor, yeah. Was whistled, you know, Milan, it's a very, not the conductor. Ah, no, Pavarotti has been whistled, who okay. was in the opera. Ah, he was away from a long time, from La Scala, and uh, they were a bit upset, and they're very critics, and uh, so, at the end of the opera, they started whistling. But you have to know that when you go out, uh, when you do your... Um, the bow, taking the bow, yeah. When you're taking the bow or the whistle, if they're whistling, you take oh, them the all whistle. together, <laughs> right? <laughs> so basically, they came on stage and those whistle, <laughs> they said, and then my father said to my mom, you know, they make us rehearsal for the bow, but they didn't make us rehearsal for the whistle. But well, the whistle means, <laughs> the whistles are the boos. So, you know, yes, it's just a boo, 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 <laughs> in terms of... 
And did, 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 did you make any, any more costumes after that, or it was just one off? <laughs> we did other costumes for other, uh, for other yes, we worked for other. And here again, um, I suppose also Miss Sonia, again, always being ahead of the times, you know, the, 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 you know the, they've always been memorable advertising campaigns. I mean, I remember having one of these uh, things stuck into my um, wardrobe when I was a kid, you know, cutting out from a newspaper, from a magazine, because it was so um, iconic. Um, these were, you know, one of the most incredible. Here's fashion, like, fa fashion, pure fashion, was, fashion, right? I was a fashion <laughs> fashion already at 12 years old, and my mother said, "What is going on here?" And, um, <laughs> and um, you know, Antonio Lopez again, you know, drawing something for them, and um, you know, some of the big, the first uh, advertising campaigns. And you so know that Antonio Lopez, when, while he was drawing, he was not drawing; he was building a set. The set was totally built. Oh, okay. Choosing the model, I mean, it was something like taking a picture. Oh, I thought it was just but a pure. No, fantasy. it was not out of fantasy. Uh, I don't know, Gladys, Gladys uh, Perrin Palmer, she draws also yes. out of fantasy yeah. from Madrid. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was building the full set. Incredible. Um, and then we go on with other. Uh, this is Giovanni Gastel. Yeah. And then. Um, Maria and Pezzi, Maria Pezzi also was a, illustrator. an Italian journalist and illustrator. And this is, this a, is, a, is, jacquard. It? is a, it's a jacquard. Is it a yeah. rug or is it a, um, some, is like a mm? piece of, is it a, a rug, a carpet? This is a rug, but uh, it was used also to be, it been cut out to make... Uh, some prices. Yes. Because Missoni is always been, uh, one of the, again... Because after the zigs and anything, when the technique helped them, you they started do to do jacquard at the end of the 70s. Uh. And how did you always come up with, the, you know, with these ideas? I mean, you know, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the, the geographical print of Italy, uh, the Milan Duomo, I mean, all these ideas, where did they all come up? I mean, was it like a, a, all together in the family? Where yeah, did you come? Can go back, go back to that picture of the Duomo? Yeah. yeah. Does somebody between you remember something else that had been seen? in the past uh, five, six years? Yes, we have seen it. A collection that somebody made <laughs> with that? Yeah, we see. Story? It. Okay, so, we see. which means that it, no, Missoni has not been only inspiring about the zigzag. I think that been they really inspire in many, many different ways, yeah. Well, we always say that, you know, Missoni has always been ahead of its time and also in uh, as I said, you know, when I asked if it was a rug, especially in the home collection, because I mean, Missoni were maybe the first uh, designer um, to make uh, a home collection See, from uh, towels that? to. In uh, Canada, we have the collection of La Casa. 78. Bed and bath? In 1974, they signed the first. Uh, Agreement for home collection in no. the state with Phil. And I think this yes. is something that now every, you know, every designer is doing, but at, at the time. See, then we move it to Italy and we're doing it. You were the first yeah, one to do it because yeah, yeah, yeah. there was also a kind of snobism from certain designers not to do homeware in a way, but you were the first one to understand, you know, making a dress is exi as exciting to, you know, make a cushion. So, you know, also, like maybe because, of course, it was easy decorating home uh, with the fabric that uh, she was producing, yeah. it was natural for her. Our sofas, our beds, our blankets were made with our fabrics and prints. So it really translated easily. Well, and she yes. always had a passion for decoration, right? Yes, we know yeah. that. And then this is a beautiful image that I think is so says what Missoni is. Um, you know, with the, all the kids uh, spread around, you know, this is very much like the Missoni world. Um, we recognize, where is Margarita? Oh, Margarita is here. Yeah. And, um, and Angela and Teresa. Francesco, Teresa, the, the, Marco, Ottavio, Giacomo, my brother and my mother, and only Luca's kids are missing. But that picture is interesting because basically that's the moment when I started to get ah. involved. More, yes, more or less and in that moment. And it was what, 96, This is 1990, must be 1991, 1992. Okay. And uh, basically, I was talking to who was uh, uh, this picture is made by Olivier Toscani. Toscani, yes. 
And I was having a lunch or have a drink with him and all of a sudden we were talking about advertising and he said, you, your campaign, your campaign should be only you, 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 oh, wow. you. So when I redid the campaign with Jürgen, with the Jürgen Teller, yes. it was to go back of the first thought, but it was Oliviero Toscani who... We're going to see some of the pictures for Jürgen later on. So this was the very first campaign. I didn't know it was like an advertising yeah, campaign. Yeah, that was an advertising campaign. Then uh, here we see you know, all the uh, different jacquards and everything. Yes, that this was an exhibition made for, that was an exhibition made for the, of course, the, the first Missoni retrospective, it was in 1978. 1978, there was a 25 years of Missoni. And they had a retrospective held in a museum in Milano, alla Rotonda della Besana, mm -hmm. and at the Whitney Museum in New York. So in 78, they already had 25 years. Oh my God, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, was, now talking, that was for the 40 to, years. Okay, talking, and this is the 50 years. This is the 50 years, okay. Yeah. And you celebrated 60 years um, a year ago, right? Now yeah. talking about the, the... No, we haven't really celebrated, but last year would have... It was yeah. the 60th anniversary, well, the 60th anniversary of Missoni, yeah. Um, so talking about all the campaigns, you know, as I say, uh, you know, the Missoni has always been ahead of the times and uh, already using um, 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 Matt and Marcus. Marcus Basically, Matt and Marcus did the first, uh, their first fashion campaign, From they Missouri. did it with me. And so did uh, Mario Testino. Mario Testino was uh, doing already something, but it was the same moment I called Mario Testino in 1995 to do the spring campaign of 96, and it was exactly the same moment that with Karin they were starting uh, Gucci. Okay. Yeah. And this is all, uh, this is, you know, we've gone Met through all Marcus. the images yeah. of their advertising with Kate Moss here. And again, um, what, and is, here uh, is. what is Miss Sony now, um, <laughs> I suppose? Um, you know, Rosita, Angela, and Margherita, who's uh, getting more and more involved uh, in the company. Well, she's doing accessories, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, she's following the, the, the bathing suit collection, accessories and shoe bags and... Uh, uh, did she yeah. follow also the family things like she left and then came back? Of course. Of course, okay. Of course, I really pushed her. <laughs> oh, you did push her? Yeah. No, I pushed her. I let her follow her dream. I really encouraged her to follow her till the day that when she, she went to basically she did her study, she wanted to study philosophy, then she went to New York, then I realized she wanted to study uh, theater. And, and uh, at 25, uh, she said, uh, basically one day she said, Mom, I realize uh, either I come back now from New York or I don't come back anymore. And then she came back to Rome and then she said, See, now the six months she said, you know, Mom, I realize that uh, as much as I love acting, I know it's not the life of an actress that I want to live. Oh. I love so much uh, the company, that work, I love fashion, and I don't have anything anymore to prove to me. Wow, and I said, wow, 25. She doesn't have any more to prove to herself. <laughs> but uh, I would like to try and to experiment if you let me. I would like to start uh, to working in the family. But basically, she already started, while she was around 19, to become a natural ambassador. Yeah. And she was very, but she was not a project. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she became it naturally. That was the moment when I was really starting with my collection, we were having, we've been noticed, and she was, the, she was just wearing those clothes and she was noticed because of what she was, and she made my clothes okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. more um, <laughs> no, and, appealing, right? And um, Angela, you know, the way now fashion is going, you know, we, we've seen all this, uh, you know, the very early stage of the Missoni, and uh, everyone used to do just uh, two collections a year. Um, you know, the fall, winter, the spring, summer. No, 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 they were doing four collections. Exactly, that's they were doing spring, already. but small. They were like uh, 30 pieces, uh, spring, yeah. summer, fall, and winter. Okay, but because now there is so many more. Then you had two, yeah, spring and summer, with the two big fashion shows, 
and now you have uh, like Cruz and uh, Bruce how, yeah. do you, how do you see all this almost uh, like madness of you know producing <laughs> constantly new ideas of, uh, almost it's every two um, months basically a never ending uh, process. process you are working on one collection but you are still have moment you have to concentrate on another one you are like uh, you don't have, it's not like those times I remember hearing like, uh, I don't know, all the designer at the time after a collection, you would leave and go to get inspired. They were traveling to India or they were going to Tunisia or which were Africa to get a month to get inspired to do the next collection. Forget. <laughs> Thank God today there is a internet. We can get inspired a lot <laughs> in the internet. <laughs> but uh, yeah. and the, the, actually, and it's a less romantic uh, yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. But it's still a very, if you're passionate for, for, for every, every moment when you're starting something, it's, you find energy to, to go on. Thing. But we have to say something about the past 15, 20 fashion years in fashion, right? Yeah. That there is something weird and strange in the fact that uh, you don't know how to define the year 2000. That no? That is so true. You can define, we can define uh, from 900, 910, 920, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, and then you tell me. How would you define it's a very year 2000 in fashion, right? Ah. It's true. <laughs> you know, also when you say the, the fashion world changed, the market changed, changed. It, became it became a global market, it became a question of uh, branding, basically. And in a way, you, everybody's more free in fashion, they're less dictated, mm -hmm. right? Because you are free to follow the Whatever designer you that you feel more close to your. Am I doing myself? I think it's. Yeah, I, it's my necklace. I, I don't necklace. have to touch. Okay, thank you. So there was someone there. <laughs> something. And, um, but in fact, also this fact that you have, in, I don't know, in three, two years, you might see every kind of heels of shoes, right? Yeah. It's just the fact that emotion, I don't have that thing. I don't have that heel in my closet. Because you don't, yeah. And, uh, but I don't know how much this is Where fashion going, yeah. or... Uh, it's almost like, you know, it's the a, everything. It's a, it's a different thing. It's but a different thing and... It's uh, one of the reasons is very much like every designer is still not so driven by the commercial reasons uh. of being, like, you know, department store that require you to have five, six collections every year to feel, you know, feel the also, famous railings. It's, you think it's and also the dark? fact, if you think that a garment uh, that really has a, a value because that garment has a value in the way you are studying it, in the way you are making it, in the way it's made for the material that is in it. And, the, and if you think that this real value stays for one and a half months in a shop, it's crazy. It is crazy. I think we are running far too There's fast. There's something. This. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, if Mrs. The, B says. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because then. Too fast. Too fast. It's too fast. And. Um, it's too fast. So, yeah. Oneself, which there should be. You know, clothing should treasure. And it's all the artists and people are making it. This is what people are forgetting. You know, the thought that goes in when you're producing something and the love that goes into it. Can you hear that? And that love must not be destroyed. And it is being destroyed by this quick having to have, throw away things. You know, you've got to remember that the people who are creating, like the Sony, they create with love. I remember going to the factory in the 70s. It was the most wonderful experience. First of all, their factory, well, you were embraced into the factory as though it was a home, and it was a home. The surroundings were exquisite. 
there was leaf, it was leafy, there were trees, there was colour everywhere. And I believe that Ty used to go and pick a leaf or a colour from the garden and then it would evolve into these creations and these patterns that Rosita would then do. I mean, there were most wonderful times because there was time. We had time. Now, I just come back from Paris, did a million things in seven days. Ridiculous, ridiculous. You lose that appreciation. Yeah. And it's such a shame for the people who really are artisans and talent, and they yeah. have talent. And they've got to be appreciated, they've got to be sustained. Forgive me, Paris did this to me with half a voice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, really, no, but it's, it's I really can say to everybody, you know, if you own a piece of Musoni, treasure it, because <laughs> it is exquisite. And all the love and the family and the heritage, this is what's wonderful, has gone in to this creation of Musoni. And I'm so privileged to have known the company all these years from the 70s. They were only make me cry. I have to say, <laughs> with the... Are you with, with, now, with, this most beautiful, with this most beautiful words, uh, we literally oh, run yeah. out of time. So I have to say, thank you, Mrs. B, that you, know, you, uh, you literally concluded this uh, beautiful <laughs> evening with Angela. That has been Making very me much, cry that now, has been, <laughs> getting me emotional. It's been very much a family affair, as you could see, mother and daughter talking to each other. It was a fantastic experience that is unique for all of us, let me tell you, even for me. And, uh, uh, um, uh. What can I say? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>